This question asks us to find the motion x of t and identify the steady, periodic, and transient parts of the solution. So let's go ahead and write the second order system that goes with this, these given coefficients. So I've got mx double prime. plus cx prime, so 4x prime, plus kx, so 5, equals f of t, so 10 cosine of 3t. Okay, so to find the motion x of t, the first thing I want to do is look at the homogeneous equation for this system. So... So x double prime plus 4x prime plus 5x equals 0. So let's write the characteristic polynomial for this. We've got r squared plus 4r plus 5, and I want to find its roots. I'm going to use the quadratic equation. So I get that my roots are negative 2 plus or minus i. And I can use those to write the general solution to the homogeneous equation, yc. Excuse me, xc. So I have e to the real portion of the solution. So e to the negative 2 times t times c1 cosine of the coefficient of i, which is just 1, so cosine of t plus c2 sine of t. So that is xc. Let me make a little bit more room. And I want to find the particular solution. Well, I know I have a 10 cosine of 3t as my forcing function. So I'm going to say that my particular solution is a linear combination of sine of 3t and cosine of 3t. And I'm going to use undetermined coefficients to find out exactly what that linear combination is. So I'm going to use a and b as my coefficients, but they could represent any real number. Now I want to plug xp into this second order equation, so I need to find its first and second derivative. I'm going to go ahead and do that. So the first derivative is negative 3a sine of 3t plus 3b cosine of 3t. And the second derivative is negative 9a cosine of 3t minus 9b sine of 3t. And I'm going to move over here and plug that into the equation. So I have x double prime. So let's write that one out first. Plus 4x prime. So minus 12a sine of 3t plus 12b cosine of 3t. Plus 5x. So that's 5a cosine 3t plus 5b sine of 3t. And we know that that needs to equal 10 cosine of 3t. So this is kind of a mess. Let's combine the terms with sine and cosine. So 
So I've just combined the coefficients for my three cosine terms. and done the same for the sines. Well, on the right side of the equation, I only have a cosine term, no sine terms. So I know that this coefficient for sine of three has to be equal to zero. And that is negative 12a minus 4b. And I can go ahead and divide both sides of the equation by negative four. So I get three a plus b equals zero, b equals negative three a. Now let's look at the coefficient for cosine. I know that needs to be equal to 10. So I've got negative four a plus 12 b equals 10. And I can go ahead and divide that whole equation by two. So negative 2a plus 6b equals 5. Now let's plug in negative 3a for b. So that tells me that negative 2a minus 18a equals 5, and a equals negative 1 fourth. And I can plug that in over here, and that will tell me that b equals 3 fourths. So to write the general solution x of t, I need to add xc to xp. So this whole thing is my general solution x of t. And I don't have any uh, given initial conditions. So this is as far as I can go. C1 and C2 are still some unknown constants. But I do want to find the steady periodic and transient portions of the solution. Well, let's recall that the transient portion of the solution is one that's there in the beginning and then kind of dies out. So its limit as t approaches infinity is going to be 0. And this term right here, we'll do just that. Since it's multiplied by e to a negative constant times t, as t increases, that coefficient is going to go to zero. So this is our transient portion of the solution. Making this combination of sine and cosine the steady periodic portion. Because over time, this will continue you know, making its steady periodic motion. Um, it's not going to die out. So those are our two portions of the solution, and that's our answer.